Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri and what a great time to be in this city. Baseball fever continues as our favorite boys in blue play for a spot in the Fall Classic. You may have noticed some cool blue baseball inspired banners flying through downtown. The city has installed these banners with the KC moniker as a tribute to our team. You can show your KC pride with your own replica banner for just $25 by visiting kcmo.gov. Look for sales information there, and part of the proceeds will benefit the City of Fountains Foundation, which helps to maintain the city's iconic fountains. New baseball fields and an indoor training facility will soon be built on a 21-acre park in the 18th and Vine Jazz District. It's right next to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. Mayor Sly James made the announcement recently along with representatives from Major League Baseball. This is a great feeling. This is something that's been needed in the community for years. The, the magnitude is enormous and the amount of kids that it'll touch, inner city kids that it'll touch that don't have the opportunity to go out into the suburbs and play quality games under, under great circumstances where they've been instructed, you know, where they have been taught the fundamentals. Well, they're going to get those fundamentals right here in the inner city and they can take those fundamentals out into the suburban areas and really compete. Other improvements planned as part of the project include a walking trail, new basketball courts, a playground, refurbished tennis courts, and a great lawn area that can be used for special events. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you news of upcoming shows and events. On October 22nd, the Celtic Women 10th Anniversary Tour comes to the Kansas City Music Hall. The multi-platinum selling all-female group performs such traditional Irish classics as Danny Boy alongside contemporary favorites like You Raise Me Up and Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Don't miss these inspiring performances from the Emerald Isles in this unforgettable live concert celebration. For additional information, go to CelticWomen.com. The annual Holiday Mart, a Kansas City holiday tradition, returns to Bartle Hall October 22nd through 25th. This upscale shopping extravaganza has been a fall tradition for 28 years and is an extra special destination event. With nearly 200 specialty retailers and over 20,000 shoppers, the proceeds from the Holiday Mart support community projects sponsored by the Junior League of Kansas City, Missouri. Tickets are on sale now and may be purchased at HolidayMartKC.com as well as at the door. On October 25th, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network will host Purple Light Kansas City at Barney Ellis Plaza to celebrate survivors and honored loved ones lost to pancreatic cancer. This event is free and open to the public. Registration begins at 6 p.m. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes presents America's Coach Tony Dungy on November 2nd for an exciting night at Municipal Auditorium that will inspire coaches in their calling to coach, athletes in their desire to excel, and the community to fight for the good of others. For more information, go to fca.org. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Want to see what an award-winning water quality education class looks like? Watch. If you look at the land inside this white line here, all of this land in here is a watershed because... That's Kate Delahunt. She and Laura Ish are the presenters of KC Water's Journey of Stormwater, KC to the Sea. It's a curriculum that introduces students to stormwater, runoff, and what happens to water after it washes down the drain. 
Most kids in the fourth through sixth grade still think water comes from the water factory. So tying our natural waterways into the drinking water that they drink every day puts them in as part of the process, and I love to see that. Every year they take this program into as many public and private Kansas City schools that will let them in the door. On this day, they have the attention of Mr. Flood's sixth grade class at St. Elizabeth's School. Okay, it's a river, but which one is it? Missouri River. Excellent, the Missouri River. This isn't just classroom work. After all, how can you learn about water without water? Look how far the water has traveled. That's the point. Water doesn't stay put. It moves downhill and takes with it whatever is in the way. Notice that's happening. What else? Every single time I go in and work with these kids, I always hear that wow factor. When the kids see water moving across impervious surfaces, carrying pollution right along with it, they never cease to be amazed. I learned about the water cycle a lot, that um, our water that we use goes all the way around the world to the next city and the next city. And the it's a great program to empower students to become active citizens in their community. It's a real world application of math and science and English and communication skills. So this is important for our kids and it can help teachers teach what they already need to teach. Oh my gosh, wow. look at that. Thank you, uh, Water Department, for doing this. I think it's an excellent program, and I hope uh, other schools uh, take part in this. Construction is well underway on the new East Patrol Division Station and Crime Lab Campus of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Since the official groundbreaking in the fall of 2013, dozens of crews have been working on the two buildings that will measure more than 100,000 square feet. The facilities will cover a four block area encompassing Prospect on the east, Brooklyn Avenue on the west, 26th Street on the north, and 27th Street on the south. The project costs more than $70 million and is being built with the public safety sales tax approved by Kansas City voters in 2002 and renewed in 2010. KCPD officer Chris Romero of the Capital Improvements Unit says members should expect to move in early 2016. We should open up uh, by January at the latest is what we're, we're projecting right now. Uh, that's the goal. Um, so, of course, as you can see, we've got, we've got uh, I would say, 70-80% done. Um, after we get through the, uh, the summer months and into the fall, uh, we'll be laying down carpet, paint, painting walls, um, and uh, doing those types of uh, last uh, details. The patrol station will include a detention area of three to four cells, a sally port, a roll call room, firearm storage, evidence processing and property crimes area, and an administrative area. The multi-purpose building will also include a community center environment with a gymnasium, basketball courts, weightlifting cardio training room, locker rooms, and even a computer room. The area will be called the Leon Mercer Jordan Campus, named after a former KCPD officer who became the department's first black detective. Jordan was also a state representative and civil rights leader who was murdered in 1970. The old Art Deco looking East Patrol was constructed in 1949 and housed the department's radio station and communication system. It has a number of structural issues including a crumbling facade, leaking roof, cramped offices, lack of storage and is too small for community needs. The construction of the new East Patrol is governed by HUD Section 3 guidelines providing jobs and contract opportunities to low-income residents and businesses in the community. 
Keep an eye out for details about the new crime lab that is also being built on the Leon Jordan campus. We're going to take you on a tour for a sneak peek of work that's been done so far on that building. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Street cars will soon be ready for testing and that means the power system that runs the cars will be ready too. The overhead system of electrical wires along the streetcar rail system will power the cars as they travel through downtown. This system carries 750 volts of electricity to the cars from four substations located along the streetcar route. While perfectly safe for the general public, any professional contractors who plan to do work around those high voltage lines will be required to receive special training and they'll need a special permit in order to handle that job safely. Looking for a job in the technology sector? The Technology Council of Kansas City has launched ShootKC.com. It's an online tool for job searches. Kansas City, the creative crossroads of America, continues to push forward in becoming a destination for tech companies. More than 40 companies are currently posting positions on the site, and you can also follow them on Twitter at ShootKC. The fall edition of KC Moore Magazine began arriving in residents' mailboxes this week. Highlights of this issue include great articles about brownfield experts who are bringing left-behind land back to market, also smart stoplights that make it easier to drive through downtown, visiting nurses who help at-risk young mothers, and old schools finding new life as senior apartments. The magazine also features a resource guide and a contact list for your new city council members. The back cover shows the fall leaf and brush collection schedule. Now, this is mailed to targeted zip codes across the city. And if you want to receive a copy and you haven't gotten one yet, just call the 311 Action Center and we'll mail one right to your door. And remember, it's also available online anytime at kcmo.gov. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush pickup begins the week of October 26 for residents in the north zone. Pickup for residents in the south zone starts on November 2nd, and central zone pickup starts November 16th. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regular trash pickup day. For more information about the leaf and brush pickup schedule, visit kcmo.gov and search for leaf and brush. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel as well as a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.